Hi, I'm Rick Sellens, and I'm going to show you how I break big tasks down into small tasks and get my code to work as the first objective. So in a microcontroller application, all the normal operations happen inside the loop function, repeating over and over and over again. So it needs to repeat quickly so that every important part of every single task gets attention before things go wrong. Some things will fail faster than others. Drones crash much faster than heating and ventilating and air conditioning systems. But all of the small task functions need to finish quickly, even if that means only doing a little bit of the task each time through the loop. Unless you're an absolutely flawless coder, you need to build and test things step by step. Every time you change something, test and make sure that your change works. Sometimes it's easiest to build it and test that function in isolation away from your larger program. And then once you've got it working perfectly, move it in and make use of it in the larger program. You don't have to follow my process in order to succeed, but it works for me. In this example, I'm going to show you how I go through step by step to build up functions. And I'm going to focus on getting an array of values from an analog input and then displaying those values, converting them to millivolts, things like that. The most important thing about your code is that it works. So the first thing to concentrate on is make it work. Once you can make it work, make it portable and make it more robust to account for error conditions. Build it into separate functions so that you can move it into other par parts of your code and use it successfully there. Finally, Concentrate on making it small and fast only if you need to for that particular part of the code. Or I should say concentrate on making it smaller and faster only if you need to. Right from the beginning you should think about being fairly effective with your code. I've made an array float rather than double so that it takes up less space. And I have made my maximum sized global array here 256 values. That'll take up about half of the space on an Arduino Uno. You'll have lots more space if you're using a 32-bit microcontroller. It's a good thing I started compiling and testing early to pick up on errors. I was able to catch a couple right away. So now I've remembered to put in a new line at the end of my printing. And I've got my values printing out four of them at a time but they're still stuck with no spaces in between. So I need to add some spaces and maybe some commas. You might notice that I'm using serial print instead of serial print F. That lets me stay compatible with all of the 8-bit microcontrollers like the Arduino Uno that don't have the memory to accommodate the full library. So I'll print the first value on the line and then for each subsequent value I'll print a comma and a space and then print that value so that I'll wind up with a comma separated values list. It's nice to confirm that this global array wound up with all its values initialized to zero, but it's always good practice to do your own initialization of all of your variables to make sure that all of them have reasonable values in them. Let's fill up the array with values from analog A4, which has the photo cell attached to it. Compiling and testing often lets you catch errors and correct them while they're still really easy to figure out. The magnitude of those analog read values depends on the analog read resolution that we've set for our microcontroller. The default is 10 bits, so the numbers go from 0 to 1023. If we want to increase the resolution to what the board is capable of, our Itsy Bitsy M0 can do 12 bits resolution as its maximum level of resolution. And we'll see numbers at 12 bits of resolution going from 0 up to 4095. In order to be compatible with every possible board that we might use, we can use the highest possible resolution analog read resolution of 16 so that the numbers go from 0 to 65,535 that's 2 to the 16 minus 1 and it will scale that up from our 12-bit values that the hardware is capable of. So we'll use an analog read resolution of 16 throughout the course. 
to check that everything's working, I can shade the uh, photo cell with my hand and I'll see the numbers change. For numbers that are easier to interpret, we can convert the values from the analog read inputs that go from 0 to 65,000 and some into values in millivolts that will go between the ground level, the 0 volts level, and the 3300 millivolt level of our 3.3 volt powered itsy bitsy M0. So now we see values of around three quarters of a volt when it's just sitting there and higher voltages when I shade it and the resistance goes up. So now I've got my basic algorithm working in a loop. I've got to the stage where at first I've made it work. And I could stop there if I just needed to get this job done right now. But if I want to be able to use this code over and over again, I'll need to get it into an independent function and generalize that functionality so I can use it in different circumstances. And doing that work is often worth the effort when it's still fresh in your mind.